Hi, so I wanted to make a quick video to give you a small update of what I'm going to be doing with the channel, but I also thought of an interesting idea. I was uh, cleaning up and organizing some things in the house and I found some old books. They are strategy guides for different video games. And I thought that these old strategy guides could serve as campaign setting books for different tabletop role-playing games. So you could take any of these guides and use them as setting books, like uh, the Forgotten Realms book or the Ravenloft book, because they contain pretty much everything about the different games. You have maps, you have the information of towns and cities, different enemies and non-player characters, the plotline, because these guides are walkthroughs from start to finish. Well, most of them are. So you have a lot of information of the bloodline, so you could have an entire campaign using one of these strategy guides as setting books. You could take a universal system such as um, Savage Worlds or the Cypher system, um, GURPS, um, if it's more on the video game or anime or manga side of things, you could take uh, OVA or Valor, I guess you could also use Fate, and you could have your own role-playing game of that particular video game because there are many video games that have awesome settings and stories and of course um, a lot of them di didn't get their own RPG or official role-playing game. So I'm going to talk about some of these uh, guides just briefly because for example I had my guide of the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. I actually had a bit of a love-hate relationship with this game because I think that, that the general the general bloodline is good but the way that you pretty much had all the time in the world to do whatever you wanted, it felt like they took from the sense of urgency or danger of what was going on with, with the, the, the Aedra and the, that invasion that these sort of like demonic creatures coming from other worlds and uh, the thing related to the um, royal bloodline and such. It felt like you could take the, the time and, and do anything that you wanted to and no threat or danger was going to mess up the entire game world. So I didn't like that aspect of uh, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. I also didn't like it that the enemies scaled with you. That is, if your character went up like three or four levels and you went into a dungeon, the enemies there would have already leveled up with you. So it never felt like you had... Mm, an advantage over your enemies or a disadvantage and that's really exciting for me in role-playing games so when you take on something that is much more powerful and you succeed you feel like oh I accomplished something that I normally wouldn't be able to do so to do or uh, to, an enemy that I wouldn't be able to, to defeat and um, when it comes to the other side of things and maybe you become so powerful that you take on an entire fortress and you're like, ah, ha, ha, tremble before me, now I'm almost like a demigod in the game and I can defeat who knows how many enemies. So that's uh, somewhat sad, but with the Elder Scrolls Oblivion uh, strategy guide from Brady Games, all of these guides are from Brady Games, uh, you will have all the information on the uh, different non-player characters and cities and pretty much anything that you can imagine or you would need. Just look at this complete map of the uh, Bruma Gate. For a game master, it would be quite easy for uh, to take different monsters and treasure and create some encounters in each of those areas in the map. So definitely, uh, if you see, there are many strategy guides there because nobody, there are a few people that use them nowadays with the internet and such you usually find them at a really cheap, really affordable. So you could find some of these guys, uh, guides and um, uh, create your own version of that video game in, in a tabletop RPG format. And then we have uh, another strategy guide of Final Fantasy XI. Uh, this is one of my favorite MMORPGs. Mm, I had to abandon it a bit because it, things started to get quite busy. This is one of these really involved RPGs. Maybe one day I'll, I will bring out a video talking about my experience with it, but uh, you pretty much need to say goodbye to, to many aspects of real world, of, of your real life, and I couldn't uh, do that, so uh, it takes just too long to, uh, or too much of a commitment to get into this game, but with this um, guide you can also 
uh, it even comes with a map. Like it's sort of like a flow chart of how you move around the different areas. As you can see, all of the different cities and um, areas where you can level up and such. You could use Valor or Ova and have your own version of Final Fantasy XI in tabletop RPG format. It surprises me somewhat that they haven't released uh, an official Final Fantasy RPG uh, for the tabletop. Because it's all there. You could say that Final Fantasy basically took Dungeons and Dragons and and, and came to be. That's why Final Fantasy was um, created. It had that RPG format of warriors and wizards, the black mage, etc. So it would be really easy to bring out a Final Fantasy RPG. I also have another Final Fantasy guide. If I were to use, if I were to ever use this guide as a setting book. I would change a lot of things about the characters and uh, the plotline. Final Fantasy XII is one of my least favorite Final Fantasies. I, it disappointed me so much. Many things about the characters, they, they, it felt so rushed. <laughs> Again, maybe maybe one day I will talk about that, but this, if, to me, this is one of the most disappointing Final Fantasies that have ever been. The gameplay, if you... Um, want some challenges and you like to min-max your equipment and unleash different uh, sort of like talent trees uh, I, you will probably enjoy it but when it comes to Bloodline I didn't like it that much it, um, at times it felt somewhat pointless and the characters lacked so much power because I think the character concepts were good but they fell a bit short again maybe that's uh, a topic for another video I also found my old my old uh, World of Warcraft book. You also have all the maps and the list of different quests and enemies. All of this could be considered campaign seats or adventure seats uh, if you were to use them in tabletop format. And you, of course, you also have the maps of the different areas. There is already a, a set of books that you can use to. to uh, that there is the official World of Warcraft role playing game. I don't know if it's if they are still in print, probably not, but you could find them on eBay or Amazon or whatever, and you could use that, but if you do not want to spend too much money, you could use this official strategy guide and create uh, your own World of Warcraft RPG using Savage Worlds, uh, GURPS, etc. Uh, And I also have this guide, although that is just the volume one. I think that's the only volume released for this video game, which is Hack GU. This game was also another disappointment. I love the first series quite a bit. In fact, it's one of my favorite video game series of all times, uh, of all time. But uh, this one disappointed me. It was so angsty and emo that I didn't enjoy it. Some parts of it were probably were somewhat good. But, but this uh, book contains uh, some information concerning the setting, the uh, virtual world and the different maps for the uh, zones and, and dungeons. Information of enemies as well, if I'm not mistaken, and non-player characters. So this, even though this is just the volume one, you could create your own tabletop version of uh, hack probably using um, OVA or Valor. I think they also released guides for the first series of the games. I didn't purchase those. I actually finished all four games without the guide, so that's pretty cool. Um, and now when it comes to the uh, update of the channel, well, I'm going to keep uh, bringing out stuff. Uh, mostly it's going to um, focus, of, of course, on um, RPG reviews. But I'm also uh, bringing out some war game and skirmish game related content. As you have seen, I'm going to bring out more Flintlock related material uh, probably within two or three months. Mm. And pretty soon, probably in two or three uh, days, I'm going to uh, bring out a review of a very interesting R dark fantasy RPG. Erland, if you are watching this, it's coming out, don't worry, probably in two or three days. Mm. I think I'm going to have to postpone uh, about a few months ago. I commented on uh, God Emperor Alito's uh, the second channel. I'm going to put the link in the description below. You should check it out. He has a lot of 
uh, interesting RPG related content, uh, some uh, live plays and reviews. And I was going to review the uh, the One Ring role playing game, but I suddenly received so many so many things to review that I, at first I, and a few months ago I was like, oh yeah, well January and February I'm going to be able to review some other things but then I received a lot of material and I'm very happy for it and I, I am going to focus on those reviews first so uh, I think the One Ring review will have to be postponed mm, I'm also going to review the other parts of the Pathfinder Adventure Path uh, the Runes of Aslant mm, what else? Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple of things <laughs> well I'm going to be, uh, bring out some more reviews of course so uh, expect more content, I'm trying to keep things at a steady pace. Ah yes, of course, more ERA survival material. If you haven't seen my reviews of ERA survival, a very cool post-apocalypse game. I'm going to put uh, a couple of links in the description below so you can check that out. So yes, expect more, more things coming and I hope I can keep that steady pace. And once again, uh, thanks for watching my reviews and videos and all of that. And if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.